Linda Lovejoy and Tyskidin Shnokia Ani Bashishin, Tana Bethany Dasha Che, Todichi Nidasha Nella. And of course, I'm from Crown Point, New Mexico. I'm running for the Navajo Nation president, and uh, what motivated me to run for president is a real problem with uh, leadership. And we are known from the outside of the reservation that, that Navajo Nation is has become a very weak government. Based on my my education and based on my qualifications, having ha having had the experience on the outside world in both government and politics, I felt that w it was time for me to step up to the plate and run for president. She's going to open uh, a lot of uh, good opportunities for the woman. You know, women have natural ability to give love and caring. And I think uh, Linda in that position, um, I think possess those skills. And um, she's got a lot of knowledge also. And, you know, mothers tend to care for many people. I have children and I have grandchildren and I raise my children well. They're, they're very independent now and uh, nurtured them in a way that they're, they're on their own and they're doing for themselves. And so as a mother, uh, I, hope to, um, I hope to do a lot of, carry out my responsibilities in many ways like a nurturing mother. That this is different, this it may be unique and then uh, of course, there's lots of, uh, of a Navajo population that may feel that uh, it may be against tradition. I've been involved in the area of politics for almost 20 years, and to see a lot of the women getting out and e expressing their thoughts as to how they're going to help Navajo people, I feel that as women, we have a base and a standpoint where we have enough uh, information, experience, and the values that we have to be able to look to helping our people, whether it be from uh, the people that um, don't have very much to survive to those that are educated. I believe that she will do a good job. I don't see anything culturally wrong with a woman running in a, for a leadership position. And our, all our legends and mythologies, creation stories, chants, there has always been a woman leader. It's always been a 50-50 partnership between the man and the woman. So this issue of sexism and women can't be a leader is all brought on by the dominant society. You have to remember, women didn't get the vote in the United States until I think it was the 20s, in the 20s. And so some of those same stereotypes and mentality, the concepts have been passed on to our people through boarding school and through public school education. So it's been a long time coming. My Navajo women role model have always has always been, of course, my grandmother. My grandmother, uh, as well as my mother, are very uh, strong-minded women. They are women. Um, they pretty much run run the household. And just watching them over the years, and including uh, my aunts, they are very strong-minded women. They are out there. They are doers and shakers. They are decision makers, and and I think that's what really um, uh, they instill that in me, and and just just believing in themselves, believing in their qualities, and and I think those are things I learned over the years, just watching my own my own uh, family, grand, beginning with grandmother, and. Uh, my mother and, and aunts, and as, as well as uh, people like Dr. Annie Winika, just watching her at work, just showing that determination to 
and her compassion to do to make a difference for her people I think was was something that I that I was really attracted to from my children's point of view I think I've raised um, real good boys I have two boys and one girl my daughter is for Linda and my two boys I don't know where they get the concept from of coming off saying, you know, um, a woman should be left in the home to be barefoot and pregnant. And that's, you know, they have a right to their own opinion. But for me as a mother, I always told them women have always been in leadership positions no matter what. They head the household. They head everything. Without a woman, there's no direction. that I will win this election and I didn't run based on gender uh, however it's it's I, I feel very proud to be an, a Navajo woman running for this position this has always been a man's a male a male job it's the, the position has always belonged to to Navajo men and I think when I when I ran and and um, showed a lot of people that that I had I could articulate my ideas, my platform. Um, when people saw that I could articulate with with a genuineness, with integrity, with with honesty, with compassion. I think is when people began to realize this woman is really sincere about running. This is a history which is going to change a lot of things. It's a, it's a new way. Uh, we've been seeing the man running the show for a long time. But things are changing. It's exciting. Um, I think we need a woman leadership. It comes naturally to, to a woman. And they are leaders at home, the caretakers, and they have loving hearts. So I think, you know, we need a woman that can help our nation. But like I said, women in leadership positions, I think is good because then a lot of these things will come come undone from what men have always twisted up. And a lot of the things that have been going on with the politics itself, you know, women have a way of taking things apart. And like they say, behind every good man is a good woman. 253, yes, and 357, no. Out of 66 chapters reporting so far, well, to make that 67 chapters reporting out of 110 so far, Joe Shirley Jr. and Benny Shelley leading with 22,587 votes, and Linda Lovejoy and Walter Phelps with 18,510 votes. Paul? showing it it's it's overwhelming for me and it's and it makes my campaign much more meaningful because I, there's so many people beginning with my family who are uh, who just are putting all their trust and their confidence in me with 84 chapters reporting we're only behind by 4735 
experienced a campaign that has gone below the belt line. My opponent's campaign has has been so negative. I could almost say full of hatred, even women. And it just goes to show how people have lost their values. Um, they talk about tradition, they talk about the relationship, the speeches I've heard, the remarks I've heard from them, the statements I have heard from them, is has just gone below the belt line. Just, uh, I call it trash, trash talk, hatred. These people have lost so much values. Their value system is in need of repair. Uh, if she wins, it's going to be history making. It's going to be uh, she's going to be the first uh, Navajo woman ever to take that uh, Navajo Nation president to like uh, seat. So it, it's it's uh, historic. It's going to be very historic if she wins, and I believe. Uh, uh, it's be so, it'll be something else with the Navajo Nation. I'm not sure how they'll how they'll perceive it, but times are changing, and, and we're going to have to, I guess, flow with the change.